Hey everybody, it's June here at Groovy Plants Ranch, my favorite month of the entire year, and one of the main reasons is it is perennial gardening month, so that's actually a thing. June is perennial gardening month, and seeing as how we grow thousands of different perennials here at the ranch, it's extra special for me. This month, daily, I'm gonna show you my favorite perennials, perennials for pollinators, all the wonderful things, all the wonderful perennials that we have here at the ranch. So today I'm gonna to take you on a quick tour and just show you a few, and then look ahead to, the, to this month uh, to us sharing a bunch of information about perennials. They're an amazing group of plants, and if you're not perennial gardening, you should be. So with that, let's take a quick walk and we'll just look at some of my favorite perennials right now, and every day moving forward, we're gonna be featuring some of our favorite perennials that we have here at the ranch. Now before we get into the onesie twosies of the perennial world here, I just wanted to show you very quickly how beautiful and lush this category of plants is right now at the ranch. This is just a snippet of what you can expect. So first up, let's talk hardy hibiscus. Now you may have heard about tropical hibiscus, but hardy hibiscus, in my opinion, are way better. So these plants produce huge dinner plate flowers. Now they're not blooming yet, but they will be fairly soon. So these are a late June bloomer. And the first of our hardy hibiscus are out now with more coming and you can see they're beginning to develop buds. So we have these with the burgundy foliage. You can expect this plant to get easily four by four in the landscape. And this is one of those plants that stops traffic because people just can't believe the size of the flowers. They're wonderful. Looking especially nice this week, the different mullins. These are verbascum, and a nice durable plant with a really showy early June flower display. Durable and easy to grow. Next up, Queen of the Prairie. Now, not in color yet, but what you can expect here from Queen of the Prairie on this amazing, gigantic native plant is smoky plumes of pink. So if you have a nice, spot in the back of the garden where you can really let this plant do its thing. It's an amazing addition. It is a native plant and very well suited to our environment, so it will grow rapidly. This is a hard plant to find at garden centers and ours are really big and healthy. Now for full sun, I really like wine cups. Another durable, vigorous plant. This is a nice ground cover. This is one of those plants that looks good so long in the landscape that I just can't believe it. Every year when I encounter it, I'm, I just stop in my tracks. It is just now coloring up, but here in a couple weeks, this will be a solid, uh, just covered in pink. I love the wine cups. For a full sun perennial garden, if you don't have Coreopsis, you're just missing out. It's morning here. Everybody's still waking up. And Coreopsis come in a variety of different colors and leaf types, from the verticillata types, these are thread leaf Coreopsis, to your standard leaf types, different sizes, shapes, and flower colors. Here's one, Solana Golden Sphere. It almost looks like a marigold. How cool is that? Penstemons. Now, there are too many amazing penstemons to mention them all, but let's just talk about Blackbeard here absolutely striking in the garden very very durable easy to grow in midwest landscapes this is a selection of native penstemon digitalis and great for hummingbirds an awesome addition and that dark burgundy foliage as you can see makes it stand out from everything else and to round it out let's talk about tall garden flocks so here we have the fashionably early series and one thing I like about these is they do bloom earlier than standard tall garden flocks, but they rebloom really, really well, especially if you just give them a light cut back after their main flowering. You can get a long season of color out of these. And they are mildew resistant. I've actually never seen mildew on these, which is a very common problem for some of the older tall garden flocks varieties. So some wonderful choices here. And lastly for today, let's just talk about foxglove for a minute. A wonderful biennial, and that means you do want to let them self-seed in the garden so that you get successive generations, but few plants really have this amazing presence quite like foxglove. Now there is, 
Um, there is the Arctic Fox here, which is more perennial than most foxglove. Regardless, let your foxglove go to seed in your gardens and you'll have successive generations of foxglove. They're amazing when they're in full flower.